Okay, this is probably going to be a pretty lengthy tier list because it's the Melvins, but uh, whatever, let's get into it. Uh, we're starting off with Trace Cabrones. I thought that one was good. Yeah. No, great. It's great. Uh, I actually really like that one. It's pretty underrated. Uh, it's got a lot of bangers on it, and also some pretty funny songs on it too. So <laughs> it's a it's a good mix of their uh, don't take themselves seriously, but also throw out some nice chuggy riffs, as the Melvins do. And then let's see what's next. Oh, the Phantomos Melvins Big Band Extravaganza. That one was great. Uh, great live album. Uh, Phantomos and Melvins, uh, the hell of a lineup there. Uh, the the playing on that live album is actually really, really great. Uh, like technically, which that's not what they're about, but it came about as a surprise. So, <clears throat> Plus the recording is actually really, really good. Good experimental stuff too. And then what's next? Freak Puke. That one was okay. It's, uh, you know, it's not bad, but the, for, for the Melvins, uh, they can do better. It's not one of their, like, heavier sludge ones, but uh, it's more like the alternative rock ones. And uh, the, I guess they went a little too far in that direction. They don't have any, like, signature Melvins songs or any signature Melvins riffs. So, with that in mind, yeah, it's just kind of, like, okay, I guess. And uh, Walk With Love and Death, is that one was also okay. Uh, it's a double album. Love is, I would put it, not good. But death, I would put it good. So it kind of averages out to okay. It Love is just, I don't know what the hell they were thinking. It's kind of just random shit that they threw at the wall. They do that a lot, but, you know, whatever. But death, death is a your typical Melvin's album. And it's got some really good songs on it. Some uh, memorable riffs, too. And let's see, what's next? Bases Loaded. That one was good. I I really like the idea of having a bunch of different bass players play on the album. Uh, the album starts off very strongly. It's got a good cover song on it. And uh, I really like the bass playing throughout. The, they really made it shine through how each bass player has a different style. And that, that's kind of what I like most about that album. And then next is Houdini. Oh, man. Poifect. That's one of their best albums. Front to back, it is an amazing album. Uh, I have the vinyl, which has the uh, all the different animals on it. And you open it up, and there's a cat, a two-headed cat, and it just says pussy. <laughs> and I'll just... <laughs> I'll just look at it every now and again because it makes me laugh. Their album artwork, especially on that one, is fantastic. And I also like the Kurt Cobain guest appearance on that one, on the, the final track. Of course, the vinyl version has a, a different song. I forgot, Red Rocket or something like that. But it, it's still perfect. So, And, uh, oh yeah, great Kiss cover on there too. Oh man. It's such a good album. Uh, I, I listen to it quite often. And next up is Ozma. I'm putting this one at the top of great. It, it was a good start for them. That's one of their earliest records. Uh, I think Gluey Porch Treatments came first, if I'm not mistaken. But... Uh, that's uh, I have that one on vinyl too, and the mix is great. The remaster is great. 
And uh, it's got a lot of memorable songs on it, too. Some classic Melvin's hits on it. And then we come Nude with Boots. Ooh. That's somewhere between good and okay. I'm going to put it at, like, the bottom of good. There, there's a lot of weird stuff on that album that doesn't work, but there's also a lot of typical Melvin's riffage that on that album that actually works really well. Uh, and that's actually one of the couple albums of theirs I have that I, uh, is autographed. That one and uh, their newest one, Working With God, which actually I don't see on this discography. Oh well. And uh, one more that I have. Uh, I'm sure I'll get to it later. But oh, next is Bullhead. Ooh. That is my favorite Melvin's album. I have listened to this thing like almost a hundred times. I never get bored of it. Front to back, it is astounding. The, I have the original CD that came out in 91 and also the remastered vinyl. I will say the CD version, the mix isn't as great, but the mix on the vinyl version, the 180 gram, is amazing. It's exactly like Bill Kelleher said. The mix on the original was kind of quiet, and it was, but they fixed that. So, uh, if you have not heard the remaster, you should definitely do that. And then next up is, was that six songs? Yeah. Uh, it was okay. But I think the biggest problem with that one was actually the mixing. Uh, it's really early Melvin's, and it's just that uh, doesn't hold up as well. It's not as good as Ozma or Gluey Porch treatments. But uh, overall... The songs themselves are pretty good, but the mixing is not good, so it kind of averages out to just okay. And then next up is Hold It In, which is amazing. I actually really love, love this one. I think the guest appearances from uh, the uh, Butthole Surfers on this one are utilized very well, and the album kind of goes back and forth between uh, typical Melvin songs and like butthole surfers songs and they mix really well together I really like the uh, Bride of Frankenstein that that song gets me hyped up and then ooh, I think this is Sig Howdy no uh, don't eat don't eat what you can't see or something like that one of the two Jello Biafra albums. Uh, it was. I'd put it right there. It was okay. Uh, I like the Dead Kennedys, and I obviously love the Melvins, but this one, I don't know. Like Jello, just he didn't mix with the Melvins as well as he could have. That's the big problem here. Uh, like other than that. It's just your standard hardcore punk album, which I appreciate the Melvins showing off their hardcore punk influences. They really needed to do that because they are very strong hardcore punk influences. But, uh, you know, the album just ended up being okay. And then, oh, Gluey Porch Treatments. Uh, right up there at Great. Because it is great. Another classic Melvin's album with a lot of classic Melvin's hits. It was a great start for them. The mixing is uh, pretty good, uh, especially considering early Melvin's, which usually doesn't have great mixing. But uh, I have uh, the vinyl of that one, too. The, it's got both Ozma and Gluey Porch treatments on it. And that, that remaster is a great mix. And then what's next? Uh, 
what is that called? Pincus abortion technician. Yeah, it was meh. It was meh. This is like the first Melvin's album where I was like, are they actually trying? Usually their attitude is, we don't care, we're just going to do what we want, but it still ends up being good. With this one, it was, we don't care, and we don't care. It's uh, It's got a couple good songs on it, but the... The Beatles cover on this one is not good. I love their covers, but this one is just not good. It's uh, just a very meh album overall. It could have been a lot better. And then we come to a senile fucking animal, which is way up there at perfect, because it's fucking perfect. This one is filled to the brim with banger after banger. Oh man, uh, I could listen to this one any any day. I love it that much. Well, well, let's see. My favorite song on that one, which is probably my favorite Melvin song, is uh, "History of Bad Men." That song will get me pumped up like nobody's business. And now that I'm saying that, uh, Boris is actually my favorite Melvin's song, but that one's a close second. So. And then next up, 12 singles. Hmm. It was meh. There's a lot of, like, filler crap on here. It, some of it's interesting, but most of it's just filler crap. And the most interesting thing about that album is actually the linear notes. So you, you kind of get an inside look at how the Melvins operate in the studio. Other than that, it's not actually great to listen to. So, uh, speaking of not great to listen to, the Colossus of Destiny. Like what? What the hell? I think that's all you can say about that album is what the hell. It's a joke. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. And then, oh, the first of the three EPs, Dale Crover. Uh, I wasn't a big fan of the EPs. But the, the best one being okay, uh, just uh, uh, they were like in an experimental phase in their career at that time. They each wanted to do whatever the hell they wanted to do, and they had this experimental side they had to get out, and that, that's why the, they just ended up being okay. There's not a lot of like classic Melvin's hits on there or any really memorable songs but this EP eggnog I'd put it at great I put it up here at great uh, I that it's it's their best EP I think for sure uh, maybe I'm thinking the bulls and the bees is an EP yeah yeah that's probably their best EP, but whatever. Uh, Eggnog is still a great EP. The uh, the song Charma Karma Cat is a fantastic song. I, I love it. I actually, uh, <laughs> the first time I played it on vinyl, I had the wrong speed, and it sounded really weird, and I was like, what the hell? Does this version on vinyl have, like, a joke version of the song, but uh, I was an idiot and I was just playing the vinyl at the wrong speed. So, <laughs> yes. Anyway, uh, back to Electro Retard. That one is. I'm gonna put it at good. It, it's weird, but it's like good weird. Melvin's a lot of experimental bullshit on that one. And it's experimental bullshit that actually is interesting. And when you listen to it, it sounds good. I, <laughs> I like it. So that, that's why it's getting the good. And then we have... Ooh. Hostile Ambient Takeover. I love that one. That one is amazing. This one is... It's one that I would recommend to somebody that hasn't listened to Melvin's because it's a great mix of their weird stuff like the we do what we want stuff 
and classic Melvin's Hits stuff. It, it's like a perfect 50-50 balance there, and that's why I love it. That's why it's amazing. And then, oh, Honky. Uh, that one is good. I'd say that's like their best weird one. The album starts off, the, the first song, um, They Must All Be Slaughtered, is probably my favorite on there. Uh, I, I really like that one. Um, but the, the album continues its like streak of good, weird, experimental songs. So if, if somebody was thinking that Melvins are just a standard sludge metal band, Honky would be a good one to recommend to them. And you could say, oh, they, you know, make albums like this every once in a while. All right. And then next up is Joe Preston. Uh, meh. I think that one's just meh. Uh, it's just okay. Or even meh, I guess, because I put it in meh. Uh, there's just uh, not a lot of memorable songs on this one. I think overall it's just kind of it falls flat. Um, a lot of weird like sampling stuff, but uh, I don't know. It, it's just kind of yeah, similar to. I think Buzz's was a little bit better, but that one is also kind of a meh. It's it's got some weird sampling too but it also has the song Isabelle on it which is actually I think a pretty good song but it's just the rest of it is not not too good I think uh, and it kind of pains me to say that I I really like the idea of each member of the band putting out an EP but I, I just didn't I don't think it worked too well and then we come to Ooh, Pigs of the Roman Empire. I think that one is amazing. Kind of like um, Hostile Ambient Takeover here. This one is a good mix of weird and sludge metal Melvins. I think Lustmord is a perfect, or at least a very, very good guest to have on a Melvins record because he is a great producer. And the sounds that are coming off of this album, the ones that he put in, are just really amazing. I, I love the the 22 minute song <laughs> that he put on here. It, it it's very droney, but I actually uh, it's it's very chill to listen to. I, I like it a lot actually. So, and then we come to Lysol or Melvin's. Uh, I'm going to put it at the bottom of great. I think this is slightly overrated, but it's still a great album. It's a, uh, it's a favorite amongst Melvin's fans, but I, I don't know. I, I, I really like the first half of the album, the drone section. I think it's a uh, very, very entertaining to listen to actually. Because it, it kind of like rattles my chest how heavy and droney it is. But then once you get to the cover songs and like the alternative stuff, I don't know. It's just, it falls a little flat for me. So uh, it averages out to just being a great record instead of amazing. And then Mike and the Melvins is next. I'm putting that one up here at good. I think that's a good collection of weird random songs. It, it could have been better. I think uh, if they had given some of the songs a little more room to breathe, like they usually do on their albums, then it could have been better. But overall, I think Mike Kunka was a pretty good guest to have on a Melvin's record. He does a good job producing and um, adding his songs to the record. Uh, I have this one on vinyl, and the mixing is actually really great. 
that's another good thing about the album. Oh, and then we come to the cover album. Uh, I, shit. I think it's amazing. I, I think Melvins are a great cover band. Um, especially when you look at the fact that they tried to cover a Queen song and actually did an okay job. Anybody that does a Queen cover and does not fall flat on their face deserves some recognition. So there you have it. That that's I mean, you also have a lot of great covers on here. I like the Warhead cover, Station to Station. That's a great cover. And uh, oh well, I've already mentioned the Queen cover. That that's actually probably my favorite one on there. And it also has Black Betty, which is a hell of a song. Um. It, that song is both ironically and unironically a five farker. Okay, and then next up is Stag, which uh, I think I'm going to put at the top of great. Stag, kind of like Hostile Ambient Takeover, is a great mix of classic Melvin's hits and weirdness. I think Bar X, The Rocking M, while also having a very fancy title... <laughs> <laughs> is fun to say is also a good mix of uh you know sludgy melvins and experimental melvins all into one song so that that's a good melvins album to recommend and then what's next stoner or witch that one is also great uh, I'm going to put it next to Stag because I feel very similarly about those two. Stoner Witch has one of their best songs with Revolve. Uh, it also has a lot of like down-tuned, heavy, drony songs on it too, which I really like. Uh, it, overall, pretty great album. A lot of classic Melvin's hits on that. I keep saying that, but you know, when you have a discography like the Melvin's, that you're going to end up saying classic hits a lot. Alright, so then what's next? The Bootlicker. Uh, what do I think of The Bootlicker? It's... I'm going to put it up at the top of OK. Another all... Like, it, yeah, it's very much like Freak Puke. It could have been better. Uh, there are some... Good songs on here, but overall not a lot of memorable songs. Uh, they kind of do that alternative rock style on here, as opposed to their heavier sludge metal. And I mean that's not why it's down lower. It's just uh, the biggest reason it's just okay is because there's not a lot of uh, good classic Melvin songs on here. It's not a good one to really recommend. And then we come to The Crybaby, another uh, cover album, which I think is actually good. It's got some okay songs on there, but it also has some really great songs on there. I especially like the uh, Hank Williams cover of Ramblin' Man. It's similar to the Queen cover on the other cover album. This cover of... Uh, Hank Williams they did a really good job they uh, had Hank Williams the third guest appearance on here and boy let me tell you he nails it he hits it out of the park and I, I love listening to that song I'm not a big country guy but I love listening to that song and uh, the the uh, And also on here is Tool and Mike Patton, which are fantastic guest appearances to have on a Melvin's album. Those two bands, uh, or I guess three bands, work well together. Mike Patton and the Melvins, basically like Phantomos and the Melvins up here. And then Tool and the Melvins, yeah, they're best buds, but they also work well together. And then we come to The Maggot, which is 
right up here and amazing I, I love how they split up the songs on this album it's like uh, each song is split up into two parts but that has the same name which is funny <laughs> but there's also a lot of heavy sludgy riffs on here that are memorable um, and then the album closer is a good weird one I think and then like, like overall another Melvin's record that's easy to recommend to somebody and then we come to Prick and then next is Sieg Howdy which is it's basically the same album as the other Jello one but uh, I actually if I had to choose between the two I'd choose this one I think this one's better but Sieg Howdy is just okay for all the same reasons that uh, I didn't very much like the other one um, I think Sieg Howdy like they could have utilized Jello Biafra a little bit better and I still appreciate them showing off their hardcore punk influences but at the end of the day they could have done better the album just ends up being okay it didn't fall completely flat on their face but uh, still yeah it's not one that I enjoy listening to and then next is the bride screamed moida which is good but where and good yeah it's I feel the same way about this that I do about nude with boots so I'm gonna put it right there uh, I think the album opener is a hell of a song but the second half of this album actually falls flat uh, so it's kind of a mix of great songs and okay songs and so it averages out to good um, kind of a, a transition for them from their uh, like they had nude with boots and senile animal in that time and they're kind of transitioning into a more weirder side which sometimes works sometimes doesn't on this album the weirder stuff is just okay and then lastly what's here the bulls and the bees ooh it's somewhere up here I'm gonna put it right here I, I think it's a pretty pretty great EP it's it's got um, what's that song uh, the war on wisdom thank you <laughs> that is a great album opener uh, we are doomed and friends before Larry are also great songs um, it's, it's a good mix of sludge metal and experimental stuff, which I like. So, the and since we're at the end here, uh, I think that's a good uh, wrap-up sentence for the Melvins. I, I like their sludge metal stuff. I like their experimental stuff. Experimental stuff. That, that's why they're one of my favorite bands of all time. Is that they do so many things and they do them well not always they don't always do them well but when they do they knock it out of the park and like even like from good up this good tier here like I listen to those pretty often like the okay ones I don't I don't really listen to that often but like that's a lot of albums to listen to very consistently and I do I'm actually uh, I got an email one time from Spotify saying that I was in the top point one percentile for the Melvins that that's how much I listen to them because I'm a Melvins fanboy 
So, <laughs> yeah, there you have it.